Welcome back to another episode of Simple Robotics, the podcast. I am your host, Monique. I am joined for the last time as far as this series of episodes goes by Jaren. And we have a guest for this final episode, Magdiella. You are going to pronounce your full name properly for me because I do not want to butcher it. But um, we are going to recap episode nine, the final episode of this season one of Disney and Marvel's What If. But we're gonna do things a little bit differently and have Magdiella kind of tell us a little bit about herself and like a little interview and then we're gonna go into the episode. So yes, for starters, um, I will say first off how I know Magdiella is because we have similar initiatives. You guys may or should be familiar with me doing diverse tunes. Uh, she comes from, like I said, a similar initiative called Latinx in Animation. So we're able to connect on that front. So, yes, tell us about Latinx in Animation for starters. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Magdiela Armida Duhamel. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I met Monique through Latinx Animation, which is a nonprofit organization that I founded with my co-founder, Brian Dimas, in 2018 that was born out of frustration, out of feeling alone in the you know animation industry working at DreamWorks at the time. Um, it started just like a little club during the stu studio lunch hours, and it grew into, you know, once I left the studio in 2017, it kind of like we came more of something that we can do outside and we did the turnout was amazing and we now you know have over 3000 members that we are working closely with to try to you know create panels um chats you know um any type of um show showcasing and showing a light to shows people of color and you know minorities pretty much you know the BIPOC community and uh, allies, and that is how we met, you know, and we work together with Diverse Tunes, which is another organization that we love, and we have a lot of events together because, um, you know, ultimately we're sort of part of the same mission to, you know, empower people of color in the industry. So, yeah, happy to be here. Yes, and can you tell our listeners and viewers how you even got started in the animation industry? Yeah, so I actually started in live action. I was a post-production um, coordinator for FX when the FX channel started over at Fox. So I was the op I was the one who was receiving the uh, shows when they were delivering to. So we were like, you know, the studio. And at the time, um, you know, I had a chance to work on Archer. And that's kind of where I was like, wait, this is animation. I always wanted to work animation. I've always loved cartoons. You know, I'm, I'm Mexican American, but I grew up in uh, Highland Park, California. So I didn't speak English when I moved to the States. So I rewatched a lot of the cartoons that I grew up watching. You know, as an only child, I was kind of alone in my room, always watching cartoons. So um, that sort of gave me this really love for animation and cartoons. And I sort of forgot about it. I just don't, I don't draw. I'm not an artist myself. So I always thought that I had to be an artist. And it wasn't until I worked on um, Archer uh, when I was in FX and live action that I realized I could still be part of this industry without having to be an artist uh, in the production end. So I reached out to the post supervisors and the post producers and being like, how do I do your job? What do I do? And, you know, that led me to um, really meeting a lot of people and interviewing for a lot of post production coordinators and assistant positions animation and I um, then got a job at DreamWorks on their first animated series CG that was huge was Troll Hunters and it was um, a really big uh, you know big uh, change for me because I was I'd never done animation production I've only done the back end which is the post deliveries and all of that like network you know studio end so it really opened up my world about the way I saw animated content because Troll Hunters was definitely not something for really young kids, but it was a lot about co-viewing. It was a lot about, you know, um, messages that were a little more adult, but still for the kids. Um, so that sort of is what led me into really wanting to expand my career in animation. And I work now in preschool, which I absolutely love and it's super hard. 
I don't care if you say preschool is hard, but it's so fun because little, little kids are really smart. They're so smart and they absorb so much. And I've also had the opportunity to work in more sort of adult animated content, uh, you know, like what if, which is completely different. Um, and it's such an amazing journey. And, you know, now I, uh, you know, as an animation producer, I find myself having the, ex uh, the opportunity to have worked in many shows that ultimately are very different, but they have um, the message in an animated content that is easy for children and adults to absorb. Yeah, so moving or continuing with that, how did you end up at Marvel and working on What If? You know, just do your best at everything you do because you never know who's watching. Um, I actually worked, when I was working on Tron Turns, I was on the post race, I was on the end, but I always work closely with our production team and our writers team when we did a lot of revisions. And I didn't work really close with them, but I was like around that world here and there because, you know, posts in the writer's room are like the opposite. But um, AC Bradley, Ashley Bradley was a writer on that show who, um, you know, years later, they were looking for someone who could sort of come in from like from scratch kind of feeling because it was more studios had never done animated content before at least not part of the mcu you know you have like marvel comics but this was completely marvel studios you know kevin feige def different world and you know i feel very lucky that she thought of me uh years later and recommended my recommended me um my friend amanda who was also a, a troll hunters um sort of recommended me at the time and I went into the interview process sort of not knowing what the project was and and which is sort of familiar to me. I feel like most of my shows and most of my career has been like a from scratch or first, you know, even if it's like the first, you know, preschool, which was remarks for um, the first, um, you know, 2D series, the first 2D CG with green eggs and ham. So it's been a lot of firsts for me. And I sort of went into the interview not knowing what I was going for until I kind of got the job. And then I knew it was for Marvel Studios. I always knew it was a Disney project unannounced. Um, but I knew there was Ashley involved and I knew she was kind of Marvel. So I was really um, there and, uh, you know, I'm really thankful for the opportunity. And when we started, it was literally, you know, my producer, myself, the writer's room and a laptop. So that was fun. And what was your job title on the show? If, in case anyone wants to yeah, check was, the credits and see your name. Yeah, so um, it's actually funny you asked that because I was a production supervisor and I literally trained every PA and coordinator that came in um, all the way to animation because all of our crew was live action and they've never done animation. Um, and I was able to bring in three people from animation, which was, you know, to help me train each department. Um, and I started in the art department, which is the, which is the title, which art department, the supervisor or something on the credits. And to be fair, like I started in the art department and then work really close with visual development, you know, with Ryan Minerning. And um, so it was really cool to be a part of that initial but then we kept hiring people in different departments. And as we know in production, sometimes you do many things that you're not really supposed to. So I kind of moved along in every department until we got to animation for season one. And once we sort of got to animation, that is where I wrapped up. Um, so check out my credit. It's as an art department supervisor. Um, and yeah, it's like right when it flashes, that's me, which is cool. <laughs> and the credits go away. Yeah, I I just really enjoyed seeing your name. Um, it took me a couple episodes to be like, oh, wait, I keep like, you know, cutting it off at the credits. But uh, I I think the last couple episodes, I was like, keep watching the credits. Um, so you mentioned briefly preschool, and this is going to kind of wrap up our interview part. Um, is that what you're doing now? Is you on a preschool production? I'm not. Um, I the la So the last production that I was working on is called The Casa Grandes, which is a 2D animated series for, uh, I would say, like 6 to 13. Uh, my first preschool series was over at DreamWorks for Dragons uh, Rescue Riders, which was, you know, small from like three to, um, you know, I guess, I, 
I'm not really sure what the preschool age is now because it's working um, and animation production in Latin America, which is pretty cool, which is why I'm here I'm in Mexico right now, which is um, why I'm, I'm in a hotel room right now. Um, I'm actually working, uh, consulting with some animation studios that are going from vendor to creative that are working in 2D animated content in Latin America. Um, we have some shows that are coming up in Cartoon Network and at Netflix that I can't really talk about, but um, the are different age, some one of them are like scary adult, and then the other ones are more like 613 2D action like anime. Um, and that is um, sort of where I'm at right now. And that's all I can say. Okay, um, I think I wanna change the order a bit. Should I change the order a bit? No, um, okay, fine. We are going to start going through the plot, so Jaren, you know the deal. Magdiela, feel free to interrupt me if you want to have, like, share your two cents or whatever like that. So episode nine was um, what if the Watcher broke his oath? And this was, like, the first time in the episode we didn't get the Watcher monologue. It starts off immediately with Captain Carter. Um, and actually, as the Watcher is going and plucking out people, we're seeing kind of where their episode left off, right? So he picks up Captain Carter, and actually, as he's also retrieving everybody, he says a little blurb for her. He refers to her as the soldier lost in time. He then goes to Star-Lord T'Challa. He says leader of the Ravagers and lost Prince of Wakanda. Then he goes to Gamora from the episode we haven't seen, which, according to the internet, being, has been moved to season two because of production reasons. Um, so he says survivor of Sakaar and destroyer of Thanos. So I'm really interested in seeing what transpired for her to get that little sentence. Uh, then he says Eric Stevens, Killmonger, Tony Stark's former protege and killer. And then we get the, to Thor, which is a bit chaotic because where his end episode ended, um, Ultron had arrived with all these drones. So we see Thor fighting them in Las Vegas. And um, the Watcher actually can't really get a word in. So he just ends up picking up Thor. Thor is like screaming. <laughs> and then they end up in Peggy Carter's like pub thing with Doctor Strange. The Watcher starts talking, saying that he searched all over the universes for one hero but then he realizes that he actually needed like a team that consisted of people with the skill set and the experience that will ultimately triumph the big bad that they have to face so um you know he just clarifies that this is not just about saving like their world or their universe it's about saving all of the universes that everyone has been plucked from um they come up with a plan and thor says like you know i'm really good at at drawing um unwanted uh attention or and basically as soon as he says that he does some things and then ultron is like oh look there actually is life on this planet and he comes down and it's like well they thought they were gonna have a good night rest and fight ultron in the morning but now they have to do it um jaren are you good mm -hmm. okay <laughs> um so they do the whole sticky fingers thing from the T'Challa episode, right? And they're able to steal the soul stone and they go back to like the universe world, whatever that Ultron is from. And Gamora actually made this like infinity stone crusher. So they're doing a whole bunch of things. They're emulating or, or redoing things from like civil war when they were like, who was who's they Bucky and Captain America are fighting or mm -hmm. beating on Iron Man. They kind of have a little bit of that where like everybody is um, it's Peggy Carter and is it Black Widow that are fighting Ultron. Then they have like this yeah, like hot so. pocket. Yeah, that type was a of good scene. They, they, they never let me down with the action scenes. Like when they were both going at Ultron with the shield, I was like, y'all better tag team. <laughs> I did think of you with that. I thought of you um, often enough. Um, 
And so what else was happening? They had a moment. I was saying like hot pocket. I don't know if that's the correct word, but everyone's trying to get the um, the soul stone. And that was a little bit like, is it Infinity War? Where, or is it the end game where they're all trying to get yeah, like the Thanos? Infinity. Okay, gauntlet, you know, and they're kind of like passing passing it around and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so they no, get in game, in game. Sorry. Oh, it is end game when they're doing that. Don't come after us. Well, don't come after Jaren because I already said Jaren. Jaren's my fact checker. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> so, um, so they're doing that. They get the Soul Stone in the Crusher. They pin him down. They're like, you know, doing everything, and it just seems like kind of too good to be true, right? They're like, is it like Thor is even like, is this over? You know, yeah, and T'Challa's just like, this does not feel over. Right. And I was looking, I was like, we're like 12 minutes into the episode. So this is definitely it it felt not, easy. not over. And Ultron is like, you know, like that was fun. That was cute. But um, I'm still here because the Infinity Stones, you know, they're different in every universe or something, basically. And it's like, OK, but then how are you able to use them? And go to all the, you know, the other universes then if they're so unique or whatever, specific. And with that comes with a thing with the show is the inconsistencies of yeah, the... Yeah, there's some inconsistencies. Yeah, the, the stone logic. Because even, I guess, if you were to, like, remove Loki and that whole show and their explanation to TVA from it, it's still... How is he able to go between universes and still, you know, have the stones? So whatever, Gamora is like, oh yeah, I made this thing in my universe, so it can't crush the stones in his universe. Blah blah blah. I'm just so, like, if we're gonna make rules, let's stick to the rules. Like even if it doesn't, even if the rules don't like encompass the whole universe within the show, let's stick to the rules. Yeah, because it's weird that the stones were have been working in every universe, but her stone crusher doesn't work in every universe. Yeah, exactly. The physics didn't add up. Yeah, so we have um, Magdiella back. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't miss much. We're still going through. So, um, so now what happens is like Black Widow and Captain Carter c- conspire a new plan when Widow sees like that metal bow thing that they downloaded. Um, what's his name? Zo- Zola. Zola. Z- Zola. They downloaded Zola to that arrow thing. So. They come up with a tag team way. The widow's on a motorcycle. She, she, um, okay. I think Magdiel is going to be back. We're going to continue. So, yeah, so she has it. Uh, Captain Carter's like doing this like run, jump, leap thing. Um, she catches the arrow that Black Widow lets off and it goes right to Ultron's eye, mm-hmm. which I, I don't know for a second. I was wondering if it was going to be more graphic than what it was, but it was still good enough, I guess. Yeah. You know, you know, it's I'm Disney, happy. So they're like, we're not going to see like blood and guts everywhere. Exactly. But if this was, you know, DC on HBO Max, it would have been <laughs> um, different 100 percent. So. Uh, to continue moving forward, we now see like they're in this, which was kind of giving me Space Jam 2 feels uh, a little bit because we see Zola and Ultron in like this uh, digital space, like in the in the algorithm. Mm-hmm. And um, they're kind of going through a little power thing in there. And, you know, Zola basically takes over. Ultron's body and he's like oh it's been a long time since I've had legs and you know yeah they like have like a whole meeting of the minds right and you know something I didn't touch on which it's coming up now actually so they have that moment um and Ultron is kind of like there there's like this meeting of the minds and then his, his body ends up just like falling and it's like on the on the ground and in this moment Killmonger comes over And he's like, hmm. And he basically does like a little bit of a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. And he is able to take the stones with this vibranium, you know, connection thing. And he builds his own like vibranium soul 
super infinity stone super suit go ahead Jen. So one thing we didn't call back to so one thing i wish we would have got more of see this is one of those episodes that like left me wanting more like i wanted more so when they when he pulls like the ragtag team together we don't get that scene or that sequence that just kind of like builds up their camaraderie i guess or like sign, sig signifies them as a team but he also plucked them from like very different universes but as soon as Killmonger shows up, Gamora is not feeling him at all. Like yes. he did certain like scenes where it cuts and she like giving him a hard side eye, like, ah, whoever this is, he ain't on the same page that we're on. And she's yes. the but they never like she never vocalizes it. She's just like, no, she does. At one point she's she like, does. I'm sure y'all trust this guy. Exactly. And That's I was when like, well, he good people. Yeah, she okay, so two things. When they first arrive in the pub. And you see old, um, Thor has one of the drone's heads. They basically cut so that you can see Killmonger is like eyeing this tech. He's, you know? you He's, can see him doing the math in his head trying to figure exactly, out how yes. this works. And then once they're there and like, you know, Ultron comes down from the sky when <laughs> Thor you know, unintentionally attracts him, that's when Gamora is like, do y'all trust this guy? Because she's seeing the way Killmonger is like eyeing the stones in Ultron. And, you know, she's like, I know we're from different universes, but yeah. So Something about him. It's and she was right. Something. I wish she would have vocalized it a little bit more. Um, before we jump to when Ultron, before they get the, the pin Ultron for the stone crusher, they do do the same camera movement, which was the scene and the moment that Jaren had wanted from the very beginning was like the reveal of like the Avengers assembling type of thing. Like they did, they did all of that. And I think it, it would, could have been even better if like you said, Jaren, they had more of that, a little bit of like leading up into the team com camaraderie a little bit, because it don't, the thing about the show, which we always say is like 30 minutes kind of seems like really good for it. And because we're fans and we already know the story, it's like they could just get to it. But then sometimes you want a little bit of that, like the meaty and the fat, you know, well, the go ahead. The reason that shot was so significant in the film is that's when they all solidified as a team because they struggled through half of the movie just trying to get it together. Like they weren't communicating. They weren't on the same page. They were like fumbling the ball throughout the movie. When they did that shot, the reason that shot is so important is because that's when we signify, all right, this is a legit team. So when we get the shot in what if, it's kind of like, ah, but we needed that, like that precursor to it. Cause like Thor, he's so, I think, cause I saw online, some people took it as like, they, someone was saying like, I don't like this dumb Thor. And I don't, I don't think that is that Thor was dumb. In his mind, he's a God. So everybody else is like ants to him. So he's just like, okay, kill Ultron. What's next? Bada right, bing, bada right. Let's move on. So As he's not really paying attention. Gamora is like super layers it in on her goal. Uh, Captain Carter, she, you know, she's just trying to assess the situation, you know, but we needed something before that to kind of right. like, and that's what I mean by saying, when I was saying earlier in the season, like I kind of wish that we didn't get the back, the backlog of the movies. Cause if you're here, you know what it is. Let's go. You know what I mean? But I think they're all they Marvel's also trying to um, set the stage for people who may be new to this. Cause like right. I have a friend that's watching What If and he doesn't watch any of the Marvel movies. So he's like calling me and texting me. And I'm like, oh baby, you you got to start from the very beginning. We this is like <laughs> if you are a true diehard fan, this is your reward because you've done the work. I was like, you gotta go back because you won't even understand what I'm about to like take everything you know and then flip it on his head. Like right, you right. the wrong show to like jump into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So I think they're, that's what they're doing is trying to like set something for people who maybe new or not as caught up on the comic books or even the movies. But still, it's like next season, I hope they just go for the jugular because like that Doctor Strange episode, like I want them to go dark like that. Let's go dark and stay dark. Yep, Magdiella, um, do you want to chime in? Yeah, no, I think I'm I'm excited because I think from from our end, from our perspective is like we wanted to do all these things, but you know, with time, budget, as you know, sometimes mm -hmm. you can't. But it is exciting that you did get the feeling we want that you want it that we want it. You know, maybe it wasn't as 
earlier, but it is exciting to know that like, okay, it worked and we really wanted earlier and all these things. Like one thing to know is like, we're all fans, right? So everybody who's working on the show, we all seen the movie so many times. We're so aware of everything. So there's a lot of this, like people will know, right? People will know. No, they won't know. They won't know. So if you don't know, you don't know. So it was harder because we didn't have someone in the room who's not not seen these, right? right. Like I was the newbie. <laughs> I was a newbie, and I've seen ever. Like I was the least fan, and I'd seen every movie, and I had like I knew some of the planet names at the early stage. Like, so it was hard. Now that we go back, we kind of go back to like, oh yeah, I guess like if you don't know that, you wouldn't know that, right? So I think mm-hmm. that from that perspective, it's it's interesting because we can now see watching it back and we you know among the crew and among the teams we kind of comment on like this stuff so um and and you're right on on thor like that is the vibe we were always going for and that's kind of we were like he's not done he's just like he literally yeah, never I was arguing lost. with one of my he's, siblings and they no. were just like i don't like this dumb thor and i'm like he's, he's not cool. dumb he's, he's like he so above it problems. all that yes. yeah he's he always like, just kind of okay. does this and then anything happens. So that's the sort of the thing. Like, that's why he's in Vegas partying. Like, he, you know, he's like a rich party boy who mm-hmm. doesn't have any problems because all he can do is, like, call daddy. You know, we kind of, like... He's like we're, a dude bro with power. Exactly. That's exactly. And we call him bro. You know, that was this when we, we did the record with him. We were like, you're like a bro. You're like a rich kid. Like, you know, think like gossip girl. Like, think like all these <laughs> words for <laughs> that are... You know, true. Like that was the vibe. It was just like you have all this money in the world, you have all this power in the world. Like you can mm-hmm. throw a party in our earth and just take over the whole like Vegas. Like think about that. Like you know. So I like that. Uh, also, the Gamora. I can't tell you much, but it's it, it it's such a. I'm glad that it's been that it's still going to be for season two. Um, and it was a really hard episode because you know when you have, um. A, and all I can say is when you have a, you know, a world that's coming in the, I don't want to say much, but in the um, Eternals, which is like space. Yeah, I tell you, if you read the comic books, you kind of have an idea of where it could go. You're not, yeah, you're not, I'm so, not certain where they'll land, but I have an idea of where it could go. I also think it's interesting that Tony had to go to space to live because he caught the L this entire Every season. episode. This is the only verse we've seen, universe we've seen him in where he did not die. <laughs> But he did not. And if you notice, he has like a whole, we were like, how do we keep him alive there? Well, he's going to have right. crazy machinery for him to like <laughs> be able to be there and feel like he belongs in space. Mm-hmm. So I think that in this case, I can tell you that space is really important and Gamora is awesome. So that's that. And it's kind of going back on the, we wish we could have that, that like friendship or like that like hey we're team earlier the best way we were able to answer that was between the relationship between natasha and peggy you know mm-hmm. kind of yes. being like hey in our world you know like it's called bffs like you know like we are friends like you trust three people not you know and and i think that was our way to kind of show that their connection is multiversal you know like mm-hmm. even though you go to new world and, and if you notice at the end um you have um it's like, hey, you're not my Natasha, but you still have the same vibe. So that was our way to try to kind of answer that because we also felt that like, okay, but we only have what, 23, five, 25 minutes to to compile everything. Um, but again, it's kind of exciting just to kind of feel that you, that it was understood overall. Yeah, I'm, and I will, go ahead, Darren. I'm so interested to see how season two is gonna roll out because if you read the comments then you know one he's not the only watcher there's like a collective of them and two he's notorious for intervening when he's not supposed to so now i'm wondering if he's going to have to answer for his crimes that's gonna go yeah because he already knew everything that's gonna happen but he let it play out anyway because like with the um him knowing what Strange was going to do and him knowing that Killmonger is going to be Killmonger mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like he still let it play out. So, I don't yes. know. I mean, you pay for your mistakes in any universe you're part of, right? So mm-hmm. I think that, I, I I think that's exciting to, to, to think about. I mean, the fact that the stones are different in every universe, you know, they, they might act just slightly different in, in a different 
multiverse, which is why they couldn't like destroy, or, you know, Gomorrah had the machine to destroy the rocks, but then she couldn't because, um, you know, because they're different. So I think that also is important to kind of keep in mind that they are so many watchers and maybe on this another universe, maybe he does get more involved. I don't know. So I can, I just say thank you so much for making all of this connect because if it didn't, <laughs> she I, was gonna myself, lose her mind. I was going to explode. <laughs> I was like, I think this is separate. I think these are just one off. I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. Marvel is notorious for the long game. This will connect. Yeah. This will connect. No, I mean, we and had the week to, that yeah. everybody died, like the whole Avengers team died. She was like, I don't know. I was like, if this doesn't connect, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that, I have to admit that when everyone dies, that was a fun episode because I think we've all, like, jokingly have commented of, like, if you were a superhero, wouldn't it be, like, super easy to like, kill a superhero? We're like, yeah, but how would you do that? And then it was, like, fun to explore that and be like, Yes, in this universe, you know, it's just much easier. Um, Which I because think the Hulk. The Hulk. And, like, <laughs> especially because, I, I mean, yes, everybody's like, oh, come on, you can kill Thanos with, this, you know, like, the Ant-Man can just, you've seen the memes, you've seen the comments, and and it's kind of funny because we're like, I mean, they're not wrong. So this was, like, our way of, like, answering that or kind of fulfilling that mm -hmm. fantasy of some of the fans had of, like, Come on, what you I can like wrote. put something in and explode from within kind of thing. So uh, we were, I think that the, and in general, I mean, our writer's room was only two people, which is, um, you know, Ashley and, and, and Matthew, Matt, who are like, it was so because of that. And because Marvel is just so notorious for connecting things, it was easier to keep track. And it was easier. We have two writers kind of like back and forth on the stories and and then kind of going backwards you know like okay how do we want this to sort of end and then kind of work backwards on how do we want the stories to blend in and i'm glad you love episode five that's my i mean episode one for us was um the the uh doctor strange episode i think it ended up being episode four but anyway and our end was mm -hmm. when we're working in production was episode five and I remember like reading the script and getting like really emotional and being like, this is going to be amazing. And um, just the way that Marvel is, you know, and also you learn not to share things because we're fans. Like, you don't want to spoil anything. And that one was one that I felt really like excited about because I knew that if the fans love this dark side, oh, the things we could do season two, right? Like that was mm -hmm. really exciting. So to hear the, the feedback about like, we want dark, we want dark. Um, it's fun because that opened up the door. When I left season, you know, I wrapped up season one, um, I had a chance to see sort of the arc for season two. And, and it's exciting because there are some cool dark things that are coming. How does it feel to like, to be on the other side now, production is done, is out in the world, and people are like, taking it in. How does it feel to see people reacting to it? It feels, honestly, it's exciting because, you know, obviously people are fans, and early on, that we got a lot of hate as far as, like, oh, they're making a cartoon, you know, oh, we're making, that. like, it's really good for an animated Y'all better stop underestimating animation. I know. So I was, and, and me, and, like, aside, if you know me aside of, like, you know, just Marvel, I am huge like animation this is not just a genre this is not this is like a way to tell stories for anyone right animation so, isn't a genre it's not it's not like i don't like you know when you go like oh animated and then you see like oh it's for kids like the co-viewing aspect the fact that it wasn't necessarily for kids the facts of your writing and creating for like the fans that are adult grown-ass people that are watching this was um, really exciting to kind of get the feedback that people really connect to the worlds and we're like, oh, wow, like this episode or this episode kind of reminds me or, oh, I always wanted this to happen. And I got I didn't get to see it on the big screen, but I got to see it on on, you know, on the animated series. Um, also, a lot of it was we like Marvel just couldn't create these, you know, nine little movies on on the time and budget that we had you know so giving these stories and these characters and bringing well i i think for my personal part that i enjoy was bringing a lot more diversity you know because if you notice the features a lot of our superheroes were like yeah we have wakanda and it's amazing that we have one whole movie but that's kind of it and that's not 
Just what, in the bucket. Exactly. And it's for on our for us was more like how can we really bring in these characters that are sort of like under under uh represented or you know not necessarily the main characters or the Avengers and create this new world. And and I love that you love that shot where all the you know where you can see all that because it's literally lifted from from the movie. In fact, it's they iconic. are it's, yeah, it's iconic. So I think that was really important because if you see, we have, you know, we have um, these characters that are very different. You know, that when you're zoom, when you're kind of rolling, rolling around, you're like, wow, you have a green character, you have a black character, you have another black character. You know, you have a woman. Like you have, like two white dudes, and that's exciting for me. And I think that was exciting for everyone to be like, we are the ones bringing this diversity and this in into it. And it was like a small thing, but for us, or personally for me, that was huge. And those are the kind of things that I now get excited when people notice or when people say, I mean, I remember when the pilot came out and it was like, oh my God, Peggy, like, like you know, bitch, flip up truck. And we're like, yeah, she did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she did. And that was We need exciting. more Captain Carter. Yes, yes. And I think that was really, that was, to me, that's been the, the best is seeing um, people sort of find themselves represented in these new version of the characters. Um, you know, Thanos, like, I have a lot of friends who love Thanos. I mean, I, to be fair, I'm always like, mm, is he kind of wrong about the half and half? I don't know. I feel like maybe it's genocide. <laughs> you know, it's still called genocide. He but, just, he just but, needed some redirection. Yeah, it right. seems to be a little. But you it's know, random. But it's random. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. So to see Thanos in like a really like a bro cool like way was so cool, and I think see, that Dad Thanos was hilarious. Dad Thanos is there's a I don't know uh, that um there's a few lines that got cut, but I think when we recorded him, we were like think of Thanos being like from California and like he's like a hip like he goes surfing and stuff and uh, or you know like that's what he does, and I thought it was really fun because they're fans. Who love Thanos and now they like love Thanos, right? So to me, that's been the most exciting part is seeing uh the fans really kind of fall in love with these characters that they have always known and now they represent them personally even more. Okay. <laughs> I did not want to interrupt that at all. That was beautiful. <laughs> But we just have a little bit more of the episode to go oh, through. Right. The episode. <laughs> yes, yes. Let's talk about the episode. Right. Because, yes. So um is. Killmonger takes the Infinity Stones, puts them, creates his own suit, and then Zo what's his name? Zola? Zola. Captain Zola. Zola. He takes the stones back. And they start this tug of war. And then that's when Dr. Strange steps up. And he's like, oh, I see it now. Like, we were never going to win. The goal was to get the stones away from the body, essentially. Yes. So the same way Dr. Strange in his world created, like, a bubble of <laughs> to salvage his last bit of universe, he puts these two in a bubble where they are now in, like, a power struggle for the stones. And then... That's kind of it. Everybody ends up in the pub again. The watch is like, okay, I'm putting you back in your universe in the exact moment that I plucked you from. Um, Peggy is like, do I have to go back? Because like, I still want my Steve. And he's like, well, your universe right, needs she, that captain. That was so heartbreaking. She was like, do I get my happy ending? I think I deserve it. He was like, nah, sis. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, mm. Basically. What if you went back to your original one instead? <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Cold. Yeah, I felt for her. And, but then I really actually felt for Natasha, aka Black Widow, because she was like, I don't have a world to go back to. Like, Ultron destroyed everything. Yeah. And she said, because when they found her or when she found them, she was like, I'm the only supposed to be the last person on this planet. I'm yeah. Like, right. Dang. Yeah, that, oh. that was tough. We wanted to give everybody sort of a happy ending. I think that um, that was that was a a great way to bring her back into that, and also like give her an opportunity to be part of you know season two. And um, again, we were trying, mm -hmm. and our writers in our room and everybody involved really wanted to bring a lot more women into the story and be like main characters. Yeah, so the Watcher ends up putting her in a universe that had lost their Black Widow. And that's when we see the moment you talked about Magdiella, where um, Fury is like, you're not mine, Natasha, but like you got her spirit, so that's cool. And she's back um, 
in, I love in how action. Fury instantly knew. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. He would be the one to know. But yeah. um, her hair was different too, right? We were like, yes. the hair has to be different because he needs to know. <laughs> yeah, and then so I think the episode ends ish around then. And I cut it off and then go to YouTube and see like an after credit scene. And I was like, what? An after credit scene? <laughs> I so I, you always watch the end. Sometimes well, you know, just like scroll to the end. I, I scrolled and I still missed it. And I was like, <laughs> all the other episodes didn't have an after credit, right? But They did not. This, but this is a finale. I know. <laughs> I know. And I, I played myself. So, um, so yeah, the after credit scene, Black Widow, Captain Carter, they're on that ship. Um, and Widow's like, you need to check this out. And it's the a Hydra Stomper that has been maybe frozen or something. And Natasha's like, oh, and there's a person inside. So it kind of leaves off with that cliffhanger for season two. And then the show's over for real now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Y'all think that's Steve in there? I don't know. I, I have I to see. Know. Or more importantly, her Steve, or do y'all feel like that's he's where a, I'm going? Because you have to went to soldier Steve now, and he didn't got juiced right. up being in that little iron giant. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that is, giant. That's a good point. I think you have to remember which planet, which um, verse, what multi, what universe we're in, right? Like keep that in mind always, because you can't change the current universe what happened right. already happened so we already know what happened with our you know with that universe hydra stomper um so i wonder the same like i i to me i saw that i knew what's coming and i still was like i still don't know i still i still don't know what they could do with season two and i think they could go both ways and i try to I, remind myself that this is an alternative universe maybe it is a different steve a winter soldier type of attitude steve that could be interesting yeah i wonder if he remembers that he'll remember his like peggy the way oh sure yeah that's another thing that i like thought about right away i was like oh i wonder you know so um but ultimately i just again i kind of you gotta remember this is you already know what happened in this universe so you gotta that you can't change what happened already right so I wanted to just acknowledge, um, we talked about a Tony Stark dying <laughs> in almost every episode, but when he's in space, and I found this YouTube video um, by New Rockstars, which was titled, Iron Man Death Equals Absolute Point and Question Mark. And in that video, they were just talking about like, does Iron Man, Tony Stark, have to die in, um, in order, well, if, if he dies, does that lead to like chaos in the world, in the universe and stuff? Like he, his death always results in like things going very, very, very wrong. And so that we like need him alive, need him to go through his character arc basically um, in order to like preserve uh, the world. So the video kind of went into that and I, I found that to be a bit um, interesting. So if anybody wants to check that out. Yeah. Um, we covered a lot of stuff. So while we still have a few more minutes with you, Magdiel, and, and then Jaren and I will kind of go through the rest of the other stuff. I posed two questions to you, ladies. Okay. Hope that you answered it. One question um, was, what timeline or character or scenario would you like to see explored in What If? I want to see more of Nebula. I love her. I want to see more of her. And I can't wait for her to get her own episode or her own series. I don't I love her. So that's that. And, and yeah. Jaren? I want to see Star-Lord start Star Chala and Killmonger's world crash. Because the fact that you were sitting in the room with a cousin from another universe and y'all never acknowledged it or addressed it was driving me bonkers. This is your cousin. Like, he is your cousin, but he's not your cousin. But come on. Like, we gotta, we ain't gonna address the elephant in the room. Oh, Killmonger was like, I'm not your cousin. And he did but say But you it. are, though. He, yeah, no, he, he was like, not in this universe. He's like, I killed you already. You are not my cousin. He's like, not in this universe. I feel like that's the T'Challa he would, like, wouldn't be able to take down so easily. Just because he's like, 
been in the galaxy and all that stuff, mm. I would like to see them go toe to toe. I don't think it would be the same as the Black Panther movie or even the episode where he took down the other T'Challa. I think this T'Challa would give him a run for his money. I'm yeah, and this T'Challa referred to him as cousin. You yeah. know, he mm-hmm. was like, it doesn't matter what universe we're in, we're still cousins, you know? Yeah, because so. I think that's it shows his core. And I think that's that's the Nebula and T'Challa that I love to see, to be honest. Like, I just love, I love that that world so much. Um, And then I would also like to see, because, like, is it me? Or did Dr. Strange Slick become a watcher? Or start the <laughs> training to be a watcher? Because he was I just mean, like, he's yeah, a great student. He's a great student. You ain't got nothing else to do. And you claim you want a lot of power. So hold this. And he has a lot of time, right? He has a lot time. of time. He got nothing time. but time. Yep. No, did y'all peep when Captain Carter saw the um octopus thingy? And she was like, Bruh. wait a minute. Yeah. He was like, don't, don't, don't look at that. <laughs> I know she was probably like, oh no, trigger, trigger. Yeah. She said, I've seen this before. She said, Do you do you mean to tell me I did all of that and you brought it back? <laughs> <laughs> That's where it went. That's where it went. Um, So the second question was now, like, if there were to be a a what if episode about your life, like you specifically, what would your episode um, be? Hmm, That's a hard one. But I can tell you that Ella Ravager, I'm already a what if character, which is super cool. (laughs) Legally, I'm not because I had to sign paperwork to say and I'll make money on Comic Cons. But. I was very lucky enough to um, work with the 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 uh, with Ryan Minerning and all of our character design team and Amelia, who designed um, the first female Ravager who parties in Vegas and everything, um, based on me, which is super cool. And I feel like I kind of already can cry, like check mark that, you know, okay. um, which is what fun. if you're a Ravager. <laughs> Yeah, if you ch- um, if I'll if you check out um the second episode and then the episode of of um you know Las Vegas with Party Thor, um yeah, Ravager Ella is there partying and she's also there drinking and having a good time and you, I mean, God, she, and she has pink hair. She has pink hair. She has the, the the dark eyes. She has the dark skin. She has. I mean, it was really fun to do. It was a really cool surprise from the crew, and I'm really thankful. So I feel like a little bit like. I can kind of claim that already, but it would be really hard because I think I would want her to be in Spanish. Like I would want my world to be uh, in Spanish because that's sort of like my roots. So um, maybe some type of like, you know, indigenous Mayan warrior. Dope, dope. Jaren? I don't know. Maybe it'd be me achieving world domination. Um, okay, so Come we down, you know, Ultron. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> World domination for good. Mm, okay. I mean, that, okay, that that's is. the same thing Killmonger's been saying this whole time. <laughs> no, no, no. Killmonger's motives have never been pure. Well, he says it's for good. He says this, everyone says it's for good, but once you got that power, I don't know. I would want enough power to like make things for me, <laughs> but that's it, and then chill, you know, like. Kind of like, I want to control this little part of the world and you guys can fight over there. Right. Yeah. Magdiella, can you tell people, because I know you have to go, Dan and I will continue. um, If they want to follow you on social media, can they do so? What it is? Also, uh, Latinx and animation, how they can find out more. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, please check us out, latinxanimation.org. Um, you know, we're a nonprofit organization, so feel free to. Follow us on all the Twitters and all the Instagrams and all the platforms on the internet. And you can find me under MacDiella at MacDiella Duhamel, um, pretty much on any platform. Um, follow me. I tweet a lot about animation and, you know, mostly about working in an industry where we're trying to make more room and spaces for people of color. So if that's what you're into and that's what you're okay with seeing a lot of, you know, feed about that please follow me. Um, Don't expect a lot of Marvel at the moment. Um, You know, if that's what you're into, that's okay too. But uh, honestly, you know, support by just the follow. So yeah, that's where you can find me. Thank you. So we'll see you around, Magdiela. Thank you guys so much. I wish I could stay longer. I really, really, really enjoyed 
talking to you guys. I'm so glad you guys like the show. I follow the show. I love that you guys did a whole series on What If. And honestly, I'm excited to, for season two. And I'm excited for all these new characters that are coming in the world. And there's so many cool animated content coming from Marvel Studio, guys. Like, so excited. I can't wait. I can't believe it. Right. <laughs> See Bye, guys. Bye. Um, so yeah, Jaren, I asked the people, um, the same two questions. So we're just going to read some of what people said. Okay. Um, oh, I'll share mine too. Cause I didn't share it before. I want to yeah, make sure we got sure. hers. Um, I don't know about, you know what? I, I think we're kind of going to get this, but I actually do want to see Shuri as Black Panther. So I think that could make an interesting what if episode. You um, know what's interesting? In the comics, she does end up becoming the Black Panther. She's a little bit older. She's more like 17, 18, like right before college stage or like in like beginning college stage, but mm -hmm. it's flipped. So in the movie, she's more on the technical side and T'Challa is more on like the mystic, mystic beings. But in the <laughs> okay. comic book, it's flipped. T'Challa is mm. more into the tech and she's more into the like, she figures out how to marry the two but she still embraces like the original traditions that they have. If there's a way to do that with a little bit of a twist, maybe that's what I'd, I would want. Um, yeah. So my personal, what if story would be like, what if I didn't go to art school, you know, cause I wouldn't oh, have all that. Look at you. Yeah. I'd ha I wouldn't have all this student loan debt. And I wonder how I would, how and if I would still end up in the animation industry because I leveraged a lot of connections from art school. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder what if I went away to college because I did not. And um, what if I went in HBCU because I look Girl. at some of my friends. <laughs> I'd be a whole different HBCU person. HBCU grad, it would have been lit. Well, I know that much, but because... Um, well, I say, what if I went to HBCU and, and slash went away to college? Because I actually don't have a lot of my friendships that I had in college. And mm -hmm. just because a lot of people were like international students or moved to New York just for college. So after we graduated, everyone kind of dispersed. And there's just like, it would just became hard in a weird way to keep those like four friendships that I actually formed in college. So I was like, maybe in HBCU or not in art school, I would have kept some more college friends. I don't know. I want to change but, that now. Uh, are you? <laughs> you don't want to do world domination anymore? No, that's low hanging fruit. <laughs> okay. What is yours? Okay. So I'm thinking, what if I didn't go to college and I joined the military instead? My whole family is like, military my mm. papa my uncle my mom like my mom my dad aunts uncles brothers sisters, everybody's military okay. and i was the one that they were like you going to college that that would have been you would have a family <laughs> i would have a family yeah what do you mean because at your current age after being through the military like uh, you would have you would have had a family <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> we would not be doing the show because you'd be like, you know, someone can't watch the kids right now. <laughs> I have to make dinner for everybody. No, my kids would be right here with me. Like, Auntie Monique, <laughs> we like the part where <laughs> Doctor Strange and his cake. So funny. Oh, okay, that would be interesting too. I want to see what would have happened if they actually made it to Zombie Thanos. You mean who? Because the only people that were still humans was the Wakandans. No, I'm talking about T'Challa. Oh, you mean like T'Challa, Peter, Parker, and... Um, yeah. Oh, a continuation of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I let's need more get of in, him in the jar. Let's get into people's social media responses. Um, Instagram user... Okay. Huh? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I'm saying oh. let's get it. <laughs> okay. Um, Instagram user uh, at JBS underscore ESL underscore AAMU, because I don't think there's any way to pronounce that. <laughs> he said, what if Hela succeeded and ruled Asgard? One. And for his personal one, he said, what if he didn't go to HBCU? 
Um, next we have on Instagram user number one, and E only for one only, uh, says he had a uh, a couple personal ones, but his Marvel one was what if Isaiah Bradley was recognized as the first Avenger? Um, oh wow, that would be a good one. Yeah, that would like really have a major impact on the timeline too. Yes, absolutely. Um, so his personal ones, what if he went away for college? <laughs> what if he was a better communicator? Um, what if he knew how to cut people off? <laughs> and what if he got his driver's license at 16? So we don't know what's going on in his life, but those were quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, next Instagram user, I am Rel, who was on an episode of the show. He was, um, the episode about Naruto, right? That's how you pronounce it. Mm -hmm. Um, Naruto? So, yeah, Naruto. Boy, I always pronounce that wrong. So if anyone um, wants to learn more about Ralph, there you can listen to him. He says, what if Captain Marvel didn't get her powers? What, you know, what would have ended up happening to her? Um, Instagram user Obscure Delusions. What if the X-Men were introduced into the MCU? I know. You talked about how Wolverine was actually, you know, a should have been a part of all of this based off of the comics, right? Yes. Also, that would be amazing to see because, and this is one of the reasons I feel like they can't get X-Men movies right now and why it took them so long to really like get their footing with Spider-Man. It would be very interesting because you're literally introducing kids into the universe because they're all supposed to be kids. Like the oldest... The oldest people there are supposed to be Wolverine, which is why they call him Old Man Logan, because they notice at one point, I think it's Scott, somebody basically realizes that there's the only two old mutants that they know of are Magneto and Professor X and mm. Logan. But like even Storm and Scott and um, Emma Jean Frost. Gray? All, oh. Yeah, even Jean Grey. In the comics, they're teenagers. They're just like on between that 17 and 18. But like Kitty Pryde, she's like 12. Wow. Like, they're all kids, which, like, was why a lot of people got beef with Professor X and Magneto, because they was like, y'all definitely got kids out here, like, dying and taking L's for y'all. Mm. Okay. Um, next, Instagram user, I'm just going to spell it, M-A-A-N-I-S-U-N-K-A-R-A. -A -A. What if Wanda died in Avengers Age of Ultron instead of Pietro? Hmm. What what are you thinking over there? How does that affect in game? Because at one point it was all eyes on um vision. Like, does that change who vision ultimately becomes to be? Because a lot of the reason why vision is the way he is is because he knows love. Right. Um and how does that, does he still, because you know how, like, you know how, like, in Loki, they basically, they basically prove between Loki and what if, that as long as Loki never comes in contact with the TVA, no matter what universe you put him in or how the situation falls out, he will always try to conquer Earth. Will yes. Vision always end up having to be, like, a casualty because he has the Mind Stone? And she, yeah, probably. Hmm. Right? So and her then how does that work out? Her personal one, or two, she had two. What if oh, yeah. she stayed in the USA because her family moved to India when she was seven? Mm. Um, and then she said, what if she had a sister or been an only child because she has a younger brother? Then the last, last user from Instagram, um, <laughs> I'm going to say by Walden, B Y E E. W-A-L-D-O-N said, what if the Avengers didn't defeat Thanos in Endgame? One. And two, what if he, or they, excuse me, traveled to South Korea because they had a chance to do um, a semester abroad and then wasn't able to, to actually go forward with it. So. Mm. 
that's that's what everybody submitted. Um, that's kind of the episode. Uh, Jaren, I don't know if you have any additional two cents to add, but like we've come to the what end. What were your we- thoughts overall of like the whole season? Oh, um, I feel like it's like the season it- as a whole. I, you know, I'm not mad at it. I'm I'm not mad at it. I will watch the second season because I. I, it's held my attention attention enough. Like those first couple episodes, I was like, mm, "Why did I agree to do weekly <laughs> recaps of this thing?" <laughs> you know, you know and I'm so glad. Yeah, I'm so glad I didn't do this by myself too. But um, you know, I I really liked really wondering if things were going to connect as you knew that they would and how and. The journey of the big bad, too, was interesting because remember, we were like, is it going to be the octopus? Like, is it going to... Yeah, we were just like, like who is it going to be? Yeah, and we like, Gamora has Thanos, like, weapons. Like, what about that, you know? So I thought I found myself actually talking about alternate universes a lot now. Like, just randomly, like, at work. I was like, yeah, maybe in the alternate universe, you would be this type of person. Right. <laughs> so... I'm all ready for the Spider-Man movie. Definitely all ready for the multiverse of madness or whatever is coming. Um, Yeah. And you know what? For their first uh, animated content in like forever, if you will, I thought this wasn't bad and has a lot of potential. You know, except for that one episode, the the lip syncing was really bad. But (laughs) it was a timing issue or what? Yeah. I have a theory. Okay. It's a reach, but come on the journey with me. <laughs> what if, get it? What if the Doctor Strange in the new Spider Man is the Doctor Strange from What If because he got tired of wanting, to, of watching the stones essentially? Mm hmm. And was like, let me hack my way into somebody else's universe. And Spider-Man's universe is the universe he decides to play in. Mm. I mean, I don't... I I personally would hope that it doesn't have that much of a correlation to the movies. But I wouldn't mind if it had a little bit of a correlation to the TV shows. Mm. You know? Yeah, that's how. Oh, you know what would be a cool what if? If they did a. Uh... Do you remember the Page Master? Yes. And how it started in live action and then turned into an animation? Yes, I love that. Like, movie. What if they started just like, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes mm. of live action or five minutes of live action and then the Nexus event happened and the Nexus event resulted in being in an animated universe? And the characters are fully aware that they're in an animated universe. Mm. Put me on the payroll, Marvel. <laughs> that's not, I mean, that's interesting. That is very interesting. Um, there was something I wanted. Oh, that I I, I wish kind of when High Sight MacDiello was still here. But what was interesting is that they caught Killmonger in that bubble. But that means he didn't return back to his universe. So what happens with that? Because they were trying to put him on trial for his crimes anyway. Him from his universe, they could. Right. I feel like he's going to figure out that that can't hold them forever because you also have two very um, ultimately stubborn people in the amount of power that Killmonger has as the Black Panther and then Zola has now being in um, the Ultron body. Ultron's body and then also you have the stones the stones are not meant to be contained mm. so that's only gonna I can I can't I can I can't see that being a long-term thing I can't see them revisiting that unless um unless strange is just sitting there rewinding time because did you peek that when Ultron was like I'm gonna blow everything up and then strange is like yes. uh-uh and he just like we round the clock. Yeah. So I don't know. And that's the thing about whatever. Like it really gets you to start thinking. Yeah. Oh, did you did you have any final thoughts about the whole series as a whole? 
before we... I really enjoyed the series. I think it was refreshing to kind of get some animated content. I mean, as a lover of animation, I really appreciated the show. Um, it's so time consuming and expensive to do animation. So it's really, really cool to see that they took a chance on it and how well it was right. received. Right. I would like to see longer episodes, not necessarily an hour, maybe more like, like 45 minutes. Cause boy, right. when the season first started and they was running through, through I episodes, know. I was yeah. like, we get just like 10 minutes more, just like 10 minutes more. Yeah, I would love to I see think. Shuri get a what if episode, like a, a, epi- a what if episode that's like literally about her. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, Jaren, for the last time for now, tell the people how they could connect with you and talk about your uh, your holiday endeavor one more time. So, guys, if you don't know, you can follow me on these internet streets at Jaren Merchant. I'm pretty easy to find. There's not that many Jarens out there in the world. Um, at Jaren Merchant. And then also... Christmas is coming up, y'all. If y'all didn't know, I'm a huge, huge lover of Christmas. So me and my friends got together and we created a um, gift wrapping service called uh, Black Paper Party. And we do gift bags. We do gift wrap. We have some amazing um, holiday ornaments for your Christmas tree. We just launched. Um, We are now live in Target now on Target.com. You're in Target? Yes. So if you search us on Target.com, search Black Paper Party on Target.com, you can see the gift wrap that we have. You can also visit um, BlackPaperParty.com and see what our new collection is going to be for this this year. It's so cute. Um, I design all of the characters and I design, help design the wrap and me and Madia collaborate on designing the wrap and everything. So if you guys want to check it out, let us know what you think. We so. definitely need to talk because I did not know about this Target. <laughs> Congratulations. That's Thank so good. You. So, yeah. yes, you can find me um, at Simply Robotics on all social media platforms, simplyrobotics.com. If you want to listen um, to all the episodes, see some preview videos. If you want to watch the full video, you can do so via Patreon where yeah. subscriptions start at just a couple dollars, maybe like three or something like that. And you can unlock all those posts along with many others. After this, I have, I think, two episodes in the bank. And then your girl's going to be taking a break. (laughs) It's going to be taking a break, working on some content to come back with stuff. Oh, yeah, much deserved. Um, And I guess I'll have like... Week after week. I know. I can I love you, Jaren. I love doing this. I cannot wait to go back to bi weekly releases. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me and allowing me to like co host this with you. It's been fun. It's been it's been a blast. Yeah, so good. Um, thank you everybody. And uh until next time. See ya.